We are here with uh, Dr. Lumsden, uh, who's the director of distilling and uh, whiskey creation at Glen Moranji, the whiskey that's uh, got the world's fancy and one of the most complex single models in the world, and loved the world over from the heart of uh, Moet, Tennessee. And for our for our friends and viewers at Taliho, we thought we should engage with Dr. Lumsden, mm -hmm. this opportunity that he's given us to be in India, and ask him a couple of questions. Uh, it's always been the whiskey sway around mm. the world. Rum has never had the sway, mm -hmm. vodka has never had the sway, uh, neither has cognac. What is the sway that the world, is? so, so when, you, mm. when you connote luxury or when you connote uh, style and class mm. in the world, the first term that comes to you in the drinking world mm. is whiskey. Yeah. It doesn't, why doesn't it equate to the other, other spirits? What's, uh, you, what's your take? My, my opinion and my take on that is that within the category of vodka there's many many different brands mm -hmm. but you know in terms of differentiation differentiation of taste you know it's very very, very minimum. small you could even argue that about cognac about rum but within the world of whiskey even within categories like single malt scotch alone there's such a range of different styles and flavors so I don't think there's anything else globally that can compare to that in terms of offering such a complex range of flavours. And that, for me, is what has kept it at the pinnacle. Thanks. Mm. Yes, I think it's a very interesting. Yeah. Uh, you also, amongst the other distillers in the world, probably you've nearly pioneered this way too, so have, gone, have done away with age statements on mm. whiskey. Now, age statement, statement did serve as a, a reassurance to to most customers, uh, it, has it lost its significance or I think, what is it? I think as whiskey consumers become more educated and more sophisticated, they understand that age is not necessarily the most important factor. And in my opinion, you know, sometimes it can get to a stage that the longer you age the whiskey, actually the less good it gets and most whiskies hit their sweet spots at certain ages. Yes, okay. um, so you're right, we did pioneer it. We've been doing it for many, many years, years, particularly now. with our Ardbeg range. Yeah. And it's all about the quality of production and the taste profile you achieve. Now, of course, there's a big barrier to go over because as you correctly said, it serves as a reassurance to a lot of consumers, the age profile. But, you know, when our industry started to do that, to be honest, we kind of ever so slightly handcuffed ourselves. Right. And I think it's very positive that more and more distillers are starting to move away from that a little bit. Yes, I've seen it increasingly, especially in travel retail. Yeah, you yeah. See a lot travel of, uh, retail, yeah, there's a uh, lot there. It's coming back. Uh, you've been pioneers in a lot of things. Mm. Uh, and, and this is another one that I, I also hear and read that Glen Muranji famously uses its barrels only twice mm -hmm. over, which is uh, not what uh, the tradition of, of various Scottish distillers, distillers is. Uh, why so and, and, and how do you define it? Simply for quality reasons that, you know, we prefer, as you know, not to use a new barrel because the intensity of the oak wood is too strong. But after that, you know, it's a bit like making a pot of tea you can only add boiling water to it so many different times before there's no flavour left. Right. And it's the same with barrels. So particularly for Glenmorangie, which has that very soft, creamy texture in it, it's important that we don't use the barrels too many times. That's excellent. Mm. So we're looking for a trade secret that you haven't let out before uh, for the viewers of mm. uh, Dalijo. Well, by, by their very nature, these trade secrets aren't supposed to be let out. <laughs> but, I mean, suffice to say that uh, in terms of innovation, uh, you ain't seen nothing yet. Nothing I've got yet. lots of new things going on, lots of quite radical things, things that may land me in trouble with the Scotch Whiskey Association as I'm trying to push the boundaries back. But there's still a lot of undiscovered things and new flavours out there to find. Is that that's excellent? Yeah. So I think it's the right time in the in the in, in, in this session to ask you about mm. and, and to comment about uh, Glen Morangi Signet. That uh -huh. is your focus area. Uh, why don't you tell our viewers some more about it? Yeah, Signet Signet is the product which I often describe as being my magnum opus. 
in terms of the length of time it took to turn the idea into reality, in terms of the level of innovation that's in there, in terms of bringing a whole new range of different flavours to, to consumers. So Signet was one of these things, it was a real labour of love. Uh, I'm still not 100% satisfied with Signet and I am still fine tuning the recipe. And I'm quite amazed that to this day I seem to still be the only distiller to be using high roast chocolate malt. That's that's what I said. So you just called it your magnum opus. Is yeah. it also your castaway or desert drum? What would be what what is the one bottle that you'll pick? Uh, I, I think my my desert island dram would have to be my first ever distillery manager's choice which was uh, a single 1981 first fill bourbon cask mm. and the whiskey from it was just so perfect and so much typified what Glenmorangie is all about that I had it bottled. There was only about 350 bottles and I think I'm down to my last two or three in my own collection. But you know, that, that for me in, the, in terms of Glenmorangie was just perfection. That's beautiful. Yeah. So crafted by the 16 men of 10, yeah, that I, was I, I, uh, I, Dr. Bill Lumsden uh, from, from Glen Morangi. I'm very proud to say that I've completely trashed that strap line handcrafted by the 16 men of 10 mm -hmm. because I've bucked the trend. You have, you and have ra rather than reducing workforce, I've increased it. There's yeah. 27 now. There's 27 yeah. now.